This video is sponsored by Mint Mobile. Hey, what's going on? My name is Michael. You guys are watching IDB. And in this video, I wanna share with you 14 incredibly useful tips and tricks for your iPhone. You are definitely gonna learn something new in this video. And if you know all 14 of these, well, then I'll be pretty darn impressed with you. So let's go ahead without any further ado, jump over to the table and let's get started. First up is something called text replacement. If you ever have a very common phrase that you're typing all the time on your iPhone, you can actually set up a shortcut. That way, whenever you type in this shortcut, it's going to put in that phrase that you type all the time. So let me show you how this works. If you open up settings, go to general and then keyboard. At the top, you'll then notice text replacement and you can see all the text replacements that I have set up. So for me, all the time, I'm converting US dollars to Canadian dollars. So whenever I type CCC into my keyboard, it's going to input USD to CAD. I also do the same thing with my email. So as soon as I start typing the first three letters of my email address, it's going to input my full email into the text field. So if you have a very common phrase that you find yourself typing all the time on your iPhone, I definitely recommend setting up some text replacements. Number two is scheduling dark mode for your iPhone. I love using dark mode all the time. It's especially useful when it's dark outside and I don't want to stare at a bright white screen. However, it can get annoying every single time I want to use dark mode to go into control center and turn it on. Luckily, we do have some settings built in which can turn on dark mode automatically for you. So open up settings and go to display and brightness. You'll then see at the top, you can choose between light and dark mode, but you'll also notice there's a toggle below it that says automatic. So if you have this turned on, you can choose to have your iPhone switch into dark mode for you, either based on the sunset time or a custom schedule that you set up. Number three is setting up a custom home screen. And if you have an Apple watch, a custom watch face based on the focus mode that you're in. Open up settings and then tap on focus. For this example, I'm going to edit my fitness focus as when I'm in the gym, I may wanna see a different home screen and also a different watch face. So for my fitness focus, I'll change my home screen to this one that has all of my health widgets on it. And then for my watch face, I'll choose one that is more fitness focused. So I'll choose the activity digital watch face. This way, whenever I start a workout, it's automatically gonna change my default home screen and also my watch face to better keep me focused. Number four is a pretty cool hidden feature that I just recently found out about. When you're searching for an application in Spotlight, you can actually pick up the application that you searched for right there and drag it right onto your home screen. Previously, I thought the only way to get apps onto your home screen was to drag them out of the app library, but this makes it so much easier if you're searching for an application all the time, you can simply pick it up and drag it right out of Spotlight. Next up is using drag and drop on your iPhone. So let's say you are in Safari and you wanna share an image in a texting conversation. Now the way most people would do this is probably by taking a screenshot and then sending it off to that person in messages. However, drag and drop can make this way easier. All you have to do is pick up the image with one finger and then start to drag it. And then using your other hand, swipe up and go to the home screen. You can then open up messages and drop it into whatever thread you want. Drag and drop works across the system and also with way more media types than just images. So you can drag and drop a link from Safari into notes and I would try it out yourself because it works with so many applications and can be very useful in so many different situations. We are going to get right back to the video in just a minute, but I have a question for you guys. Have you ever spent way too much money on something like I just did with this smoothie? Well, then today's sponsor is for you because we have partnered with Mint Mobile and they are all about saving you money. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. That's literally only five bucks more than this entire smoothie cost me. 
Mint Mobile's plans offer unlimited talk and text and also ultra fast 5G. And you can also choose to share your data with other devices like your iPad or your MacBook, for example. Switching over to Mint Mobile is super easy thanks to their eSIM compatibility. You can keep your current phone number and sign up on their website and literally get your plan activated in minutes. And if your device doesn't support eSIM, Mint Mobile will happily ship you a SIM card that fits your device. If you want to try out Mint Mobile, you can use our link in the description down below. That's mintmobile.com slash IDB. So stop paying more than you need to on your wireless bill and start saving big today with Mint Mobile. Now let's get back to the video. Next up at number six is accessing the hidden tools to edit your screenshots. So when you take a screenshot, if you go all the way down to the bottom right of the screen, you'll notice there's a plus icon. If you tap on this, you can see we have access to a bunch of tools. We can add a non-destructive description. We can add a text box, a signature, change the opacity, and probably my favorite is adding a magnifier. Whenever I find myself sending a screenshot, it's because I want to give emphasis to something on my screen. So I constantly find myself using this magnifier to add emphasis to my screenshots. Next up at number seven is getting a more detailed insight into the battery health of your iPhone. And for a lot of you, I think this is going to be one of your favorite tips of the entire video. So you guys are probably familiar with battery health on your iPhone. However, you may not know that when you check your battery health in settings, it's actually lying to you. That's because the number that it's getting in settings is actually based off the rated capacity of your iPhone, not the true capacity. So there is a way to work around this and see your actual battery capacity and the cycle count. You want to go into the description down below and install the shortcut that I have linked for you. Once you have the shortcut installed, open up settings and then tap on privacy and security. Then scroll down and tap on analytics and improvements and then analytics data. You then want to search for your most recent analytics file. Be careful because if you have an Apple watch, you're going to see two analytics files for the same day. So make sure to choose the one that is for your iPhone. You then want to tap on the share sheet at the top right and then run the battery stats shortcut. After you run this shortcut, you're going to see a whole bunch of better information on your battery as compared to what Apple gives you inside settings. So after running this shortcut, you can see that my iPhone settings app was actually lying to me, telling me that my iPhone's battery health was at 100%. And after doing this, we can see that that was completely not true. Number eight is another shortcut that you guys can install. So just like the previous one, I'll have it linked in the description down below. This one will allow you to download any video from the web. So whether it's a TikTok video, a video from Twitter, or even a YouTube video, once you have the shortcut installed, it's going to allow you to save it right into your photos application. So in this example, I will use a YouTube video. So I will click on the share button on a video and then scroll over and click on more. I'll then choose my download shortcut. Again, you have to install this on your iPhone. And once I run it, I'm going to get a few prompts. And the first one is what quality I want to save the video in. So I'll choose the max quality at 1080p. And then after the video downloads, it's going to ask you a few more prompts. One of them might be if it can access your photo library, just click on allow. And then once the video finishes downloading, it's going to save it right into your photos application. Next up at number nine, this one is very simple, but it allows you to connect to a Bluetooth speaker much faster. So the traditional way that most people will connect to one of their Bluetooth speakers is by going into settings and then choosing Bluetooth. However, you can actually do this without even opening settings. So if you go into control center, you'll notice on the top right widget on the media playback section, there is a very small airplay icon. And if you click on this, it's going to launch you into a view that shows all of your available speakers and TVs. So I use this every single time I turn on my Bluetooth speaker. I never even go into settings anymore.
Number 10 is for Apple Music. So if you've ever been listening to a playlist and then you're browsing through your library and find a song that you wanna play next, most people would just press and hold on the song and then choose play next, obviously. But there's actually a really cool gesture that you can do on the song that makes this a lot easier. Simply find the song that you want to play next and swipe from left to right until you feel the haptic feedback. Doing this is going to add that song into your up next on the queue. Next up is for shortcuts. And instead of showing you another individual shortcut, I would suggest that you open up the shortcuts application and go down to the bottom right and browse the shortcuts gallery. Most people didn't even know that shortcuts had a gallery and you can browse this and find pretty much any shortcut that you want. When shortcuts was first released from Apple, this gallery section was pretty empty, but now as the years have gone on, there are so many useful shortcuts that you can find in the gallery. So I'd recommend browsing this section of the shortcuts app and you'll almost guaranteed find something that fits you. Number 12 is to turn on a bunch of settings that are actually turned off by default. First up is battery percentage. Open up settings and then tap on battery. You can then turn on battery percentage at the very top. When you do this, it's going to put the percentage of your battery inside the icon. This makes it so much easier to check your battery level throughout the day without going into control center. The next one is to turn on haptics on your iPhone's keyboard. Open up settings and then tap on sounds and haptics. Then scroll down and choose keyboard feedback. If you turn on haptic feedback inside here, you're gonna get a really nice vibration feedback when you type on your keyboard. And the final setting I'd recommend turning on is text message forwarding. This is useful if you have an iPad or a MacBook and wanna receive your text messages from your iPhone on those other devices. Go to settings and scroll down to messages. Then choose text message forwarding. From here, you will see all of your Apple devices that you can turn this on for. So I'd recommend turning it on for all of your iPads and Mac devices. This way, no matter what device you're using, you can still receive iMessages and also text messages from your iPhone. And number 13, our second to last one, is I have a bunch of settings I'd recommend turning on for Apple Music. So inside settings, scroll down and choose music. The first one is for streaming music over cellular. If you click on audio quality and choose cellular streaming, if you have a low data plan, I'd recommend setting this to high efficiency. This way, when you're streaming Apple Music, it's going to take up way less of your data. Another setting you can turn on for Apple Music is going to help you save storage. You can turn on optimized storage for music on your iPhone. What this is going to do is it's going to remove music from your library that you haven't played in a long time. So it's going to do this intelligently so your iPhone is not going to delete a song that you played just last week. It's only going to remove songs that you haven't played in a very long time. So I'd recommend turning this on if you constantly run low on iPhone storage. My next suggestion for Apple Music is to set a custom EQ or equalizer setting. Many people just leave this as off, but if you listen to a certain genre of music, setting a custom EQ can make your music sound a lot better. So for me, I listen to a lot of rock and metal, and whenever I set the rock EQ, I find that it sounds a lot better to my ear. And the final setting that you should turn on inside Apple Music settings is automatic downloads. When you have this turned on, as soon as you add an item into your library, whether it's a song or a full album, it's going to automatically start downloading and save to your device. And finally, at number 14, if you're ever out somewhere and you hear a song that you don't know the name of, all you have to do is ask Siri, what song is this? It's then going to use the built-in Shazam recognition feature and tell you exactly what song is playing. You can get an extension of this feature if you go into settings and then control center and add the Shazam widget right into control center. When you do this, not only can you start music recognition right from control center, but you can also see a history of every song you have looked up.
I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I love helping you get the most out of your Apple devices. So if you could, please leave us a like down below and also subscribe for more videos like this. My name is Michael with IDB and I'll see you next time.